all this is dr mubeen sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show this is our second one and this is our chit chat tomorrow we're going to be off sorry about this camera it's a webcam it just wants to focus the way it wants so tomorrow we're going to be off because i i will be traveling 10 11 hours if any of you want to talk with me while i'm traveling feel free let me know and i'll share my phone number and you can call in and we will we'll talk medicine at that time so all right let's see the questions james hello how are you tika hello welcome uh, carly back everyone everyone yes arun says <laughs> and arun is always the one to start us with a question sephra yes sephrantine and nilfenavir any thoughts so i know that in japan they've been working on this one and they feel that this is really good i have to look at their mechanism of actions and discuss it so arun can I put a duty on you? So I've been serving for 15 months. Can you please remind me in return? Can you please remind me on this Friday so I can talk about this? Nairi says, I wish I could watch the whole thing. Thank you very much, Nairi. You can watch it when it is uh, recorded. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello, hello, and hello. Um, I'm looking at various people's names and just calling them hello here. Uh, all right, so question. Susan says, yes, our dark horse podcast looks like FSG has got demonetized. Is supposedly saying something that is supposedly harmful. They aren't happy for FSCC giving, having that happen. So actually, I saw that video that they said, and they that video was circulated internally to the folks who are friends of FLCC. And the video was actually quite a rebellious video. <laughs> In that video, they had said that we don't think it is uh, uh, it is policy issue. This is censoring and or censorship. And then they had given examples of what they said and got censored. And I think that video itself got further uh, hot hot water for them. Th this is just so weird. I have so far now fifty four or more videos that have become demonetized. Majority of the videos that are demonetized are the one that were earning good revenue. The result of that is that within last two months, YouTube has brought the channel viewership and the revenue to lesser than 50%. So that is their way of uh, beating up the voices that they don't want to hear. OK, so now, now let's see. <laughs> Absolutely, Roman is correct. Ivermectin bad, Manupiravir good. Although, if you look at it, if I share my screen for a second, the difference between malopiravir and ivermectin. Ivermectin is known, and for all of this that I'm going to talk, we have the references in the previous uh, previous discussion. So in the description of the videos, there are references. So I'm not talking anything out of the air. So here we know that ivermectin is known to bind and interfere between the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein and the ACE2. So that is one mechanism. Malnupiravir doesn't do that. Secondly, we know that ivermectin disrupts RDRP, three chymotrypsin-like protease, or also called MPRO, and important, important alpha and beta. All three enzymes in here virus enzyme, virus enzyme, virus usage or used cargo. This is our enzyme. Ivermectin disrupts them all for the usage by the virus. Malnupiravir only does this part. So they took one part of ivermectin function and used that to create the, the product. So malnupiravir is just this. Ivermectin then is nuclear factor a beta modulator as well, which malnupiravir is not. So malnupiravir, out of all those five functions, one, two, three, four, five, out of all of them, malnupiravir only is this. And they have, I believe, already gotten half a billion dollars um, buy order, purchase order. I believe, I, I may be wrong, $400 million or something purchase order. So the best thing to do at this time is to rename ivermectin to something else, sell it for $4,000, and then one can, everyone can earn money and ivermectin will be fine. 
Okay, so Morifat says, natural infection or killed vaccine seems similar in terms of immune response as both will generate naturalizing, uh, neutralizing as well as binding antibodies. Um, and then you have a continuation. So, um, but mRNA vaccines or viral vector vaccines seem superior in terms of gen generating only neutralizing antibodies, which are much efficient in clearing the infection, just a wild guess. So this is a position taken by vaccination folks, and this is an incorrect position. They, interestingly, there is a position which is actually very plausible as well, and that is that if you only attack a small part, and if the virus develops an escape from that, that means changes the spike protein, then the whole vaccine system falls apart and the immunity falls apart. But we should actually understand it correctly. Both are functional. They, they are not superior or inferior to each other. Um, vaccine, if it is only a spike protein and then we produce the antibodies against that, that is functional as well. And I actually discussed a study a few days ago a weeks, couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, I think, where I discussed that there was a study that said that the vaccine that is working against a spike protein is actually producing more non-binding than the binding, or sorry, more binding than the neutralizing. So the ratio is actually less for neutralizing. And even that study was disingenuous. Why? Who cares for what is the ratio? What we care for is, can it neutralize or not? Can it bind to the thing and let it not function correctly? And vaccine-generated antibodies do that. So does it matter that I have 10 neutralizing and 1,000 binding? It doesn't. Then the people who talk about binding, they come in and they say, no, 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 it matters because the binding would cause ADE. And I did one more video a few days ago where I talked about it, that even neutralizing antibodies would do ADE. Neutralizing antibodies would have a greater chance to do ADE because neutralizing antibody means, if I draw it over here, neutralizing antibody will mean here is a cell. Here is the ACE2. Why cannot I change my marker? Here is the ACE2. And let's say here is a spike protein, correct? So there is a neutralizing antibody that is sitting between them. If it sits between them and does not let them combine, then what would happen to the virus? Virus is going to sit outside. When virus is going to sit outside, isn't this antibody stuck to the virus now the ADE's target? <laughs> A binding antibody would actually be less risky because binding antibody assumes that the virus can still get into the cell. That means cell virus is not going to be sitting outside causing ADE. But in case of neutralizing antibody, the virus is going to be sitting outside. So this will cause more ADE or the binding one. This is These are the flaws in these incorrect assumptions that people have been making. And I know the doctors who have made those assumptions and put them out there and influence millions of people incorrectly and to harm. I don't think they're intended to, but that causes harm. So, Morifat, I know that your questions are actually very good. You, you don't mean anything negative here. But no, so this um, does not, binding versus neutralizing is not the right argument. So, Roman says 1.2 billion purchase order came out today. See, Roman, we should have made a tiny part of the ivermectin. We should have taken it, which disrupts the three chymotrypsin like protease which also means it would disrupt the TMPRSS2. And now we would say we have two very important protease functions in this drug and get like $4 billion order as well. OK. Doug says, no vaccine and no infection has 3.1 incidence, 96.9%. No vaccine and no person. <laughs> OK, fine. So you're saying that not infected, not vaccinated. In the Qatar study, that is correct. They had 3.1% incidence in given period of time. So remember, incidence rates are within the given period of time. So that was 46 weeks. And that is good for some, but who knows, 47th week they can become sick. That is why I did not use incidences, because number one, CDC does not report incidence rates. Qatar study does report the incidence rate. Pfizer study did not report the incidence rate, so they could not be compared correctly. 
Mariesta Drush, have a nice time. Thank you very much for the super chat. Uh, let's continue to have our discussions. Maya says, about diabetes and as during this pandemic, pandemic, I called it pandemic, how to control as it is difficult to walk as my father is very tired all the time, lockdown, insulin, pen using, any easy exercises to reduce diabetes? Okay, so very good question. And I'm going to give you uh, so short answer. Anything that he can do would help reduce it. Now, let me explain why. So a short story. I used to ask this questions from medical students when I would go on a tour, international tour, and go to various universities. And I'll be presenting. I'll ask this question. And then uh, in the beginning, when I used to ask this question, students would not know the answer. And they were just like embarrassed. And then they caught on to me and they said, OK, Mubeen is going to come in and ask this question. And so they kind of transmitted the answer to each other in various universities. So soon people knew this is the answer to Mubeen's question. And then I had to change my question. So here is what happens. Let's say this is a muscle cell. Good. So in the muscle cell, look at the diabetes for general. What happens in diabetes? So let's say here is a cell, some cell. I made it triangular, triangular or not. So this is a cell. In case of diabetes, let's say type 2 diabetes. The insulin, so this is a glucose transporter. And there is the insulin receptor. And the idea is that when, when insulin would come and attach here to the receptor, the glut would open up the glucose transporter and would allow the glucose to enter in the cell. This is the normal function. The peripheral resistance means that when the insulin comes and attaches here, the internal machinery that allows this whole glucose thing to go in and the, the go, gates to open and the channel to work, that internal machinery, which is the PAAR gamma, PAAR gamma, I think there is one more part in it. That machinery system is not, enzyme system is not working correctly. And that's because of the free, free fatty acids. And then glucose is just sitting outside. Good. So what is the baseline here? Be, insulin is present, but the glut transporter is not responding. Glucose cannot get into the cell. Glucose is sitting outside waiting to go in the cell. Now, here is a muscle cell. Muscle are the only cell. Uh, again, we're not talking PhD. There may be more cells. We're talking general medicine. Muscles are uh, graduate level medicine. Muscles are the cells where when they are they are exercising, meaning when they are sh we're shearing, when they're stretching, for example, when their shape is changing, let's say this muscle cell is stretched this way when the person is doing exercises. And then it is brought in like this when the person is doing exercises. Any exercise that would change the shape of the muscle. Then what muscle does is inside the muscle are the glucose transporters that do not need insulin. When the muscle's shape changes again and again, glucose transporters from inside the muscle cell are sent to the surface to say, guys, go get more glucose in. This transporter, this glut is not insulin dependent. That is a beauty. Otherwise, think about it for a second. If this was not happening, what was not happening? If this glucose transporter that is in insulin independent was not happening, then if you ask the person to do the exercises who is diabetic, he would need more energy inside the cell. And the energy is not going to come into the cell because insulin would not be able to open the glut transporters. The result will be person is doing exercises, using up energy inside this the muscle, but muscle cannot pick up more glucose and the cell would actually start dying. So such diabetics, when they would do an exercise, they would start hurting their muscle, but it does not happen. Instead, they actually start improving and the glucose levels start improving. The reason is muscles have glut transporters that are insulin independent, but they are only brought to the surface when the muscles are working. So any exercise, light walk, just doing simple yoga type exercise, meaning whatever exercise he can do, but still movement of the body muscles would allow 
him to start picking up the glucose. Now, of course, a light exercise and a less duration ex exercise will not pick up as much glucose as a walk outside for, let's say, an hour. But it would still make a positive difference instead of the negative. Diabetes is a fascinating area to talk about. Question, Delise Mir says, question, T-cell engineering for vector vaccines, is it possible? <clears throat> so T-cell engineering for vector vaccines. So vector vaccines are adenovirus-based vaccine or other such things. Uh, what will be the function of the T-cell engineering in there? Can you please connect the dot a little more or elaborate your question a little more? Okay. <clears throat> Gold Country says, I still can't make super sticker or super chat work. How else can I contribute? Some problem between PayPal, MSH, YouTube, Google. So if you click on the description of this video, in there, there's a buy me a coffee that does not need PayPal or anything. There is also a Patreon. You can actually become a Patreon and then cancel it if you like. And then, uh, of course, you can uh, use PayPal too if you want. But thank you very much for the intent. Building Maker. Building Maker, I saw you after a long time. Can the messenger RNA vaccine produce a reaction to future vaccines, messenger RNA vaccine, produce a reaction to future vaccines by the foot that is supposedly anchoring the spike to the present presenting cell membrane. I thought the spike would be broken down. So very good question. And very, I think you would like the answer. So even if you look at the Japanese study that we looked at a few days, no, we didn't look at that. I read that yesterday because there was a lot of uh, noise about a J Japanese study. And this um, assistant professor from Canada talked about it on Alex's show and said that somehow the vaccine, uh, the spikes are everywhere and so on. So I looked at that study as well, uh, the translation of it. So how accurate it is, I do not know. And they admitted in there that the idea is that the majority of the spike protein would be smashed inside the cell. That is the idea. And they say it in there. Uh, and I was going to discuss that so if not today and tomorrow then maybe day after that this spike protein is supposed to be destroyed inside they said but maybe some of the spike protein would appear on the surface and if it does it should just be anchored there now here is a missing piece in this one my knowledge gap that gap is this somebody has to ask pfizer or moderna this question the question is the following is your messenger rna for spike protein is it built with an anchor in it and are you expecting the spike protein to be to be secretable to be soluble to make a protein soluble there are certain um, structures to be added to it plus this uh, anchor to be added to it so the question for these folks will be that, hey, do you have those structures created and the anchors created? If so, then we have a problem that the spike protein can appear on the surface. But if not, then ideally it should all be broken down inside here. The study that I discussed, not the Japanese studies, the other study that I discussed was more towards the adenovirus-based vaccines where the DNA of the spike protein, which was going into our nucleus, got damaged and that anchor part was missing and the spike protein just got released and then they also said that hey pfizer is 10 times lesser with this pro propensity versus astrazeneca so to me the whole study looked fishy that they were number one leaving messenger rna vaccines out and they were saying you should actually take messenger rna vaccines then they were honing in on on the vector vaccine side you know virus and then within that they were becoming specific to AstraZeneca and saying uh, Johnson, uh, sorry, Pfizer is okay as well. So I don't know if that was really entirely data. There, there were some uh, other ideas as well. But I hope that answers your question. And I had saw, seen one more super chat. So thank you very much uh, to whoever it was. Joel, thank you very much. Any update on safety of messenger RNA vaccine? That is VITT. So I haven't yet read that, Joel, and I intend to, when the list continues to grow, I would do that. 
Cynthia says, because body recognizes many parts of actual virus, not just spike protein, is natural infection better protection against mutation, which might happen by putting evolutionary pressure on spike? So the multiple answers to this question. Short answer, yes, if our body has a natural infection, we are more aware of a lot of pieces. There are studies, so I'm, I'm going to be thorough about it, this, but let me send uh, provide a statement here. The statement is, I don't believe we should not take a vaccine and wait for the infection. Infection can have disastrous outcome. So this is like, let's say the vaccines are bad as well. Even then, horror movie is a controlled horror. You can see the horror, but you still know how much of the horror would occur. Virus can cause uncontrolled horror. That is the basic difference. So as much as um, I discuss about the vaccine's efficacy, compare that to, to the natural infection, the permanent in, uh, immunity with the natural infection and so on, I also realize that the vaccine protects against some virus unexpected outcomes, which we do not even know who would get them. So with that statement, uh, yes, natural infection would provide actually a better coverage. And this is why the studies that come out and they say, you know what, after a natural infection, these, the binding antibodies were more than the uh, neutralizing. Do, do you not understand that our body knows when it is fighting with the virus that if the virus is going down or not? If the virus is not going down, it would continue to try to make new proteins or it would end up in cytokine storm and kill the person. But body would not rest easy to say, oh, well, you know what, just leave it, at least with the SARS-CoV-2. There are viruses and pathogens that become carriers. SARS-CoV-2 is not one of them. So the ratio of binding to neutralizing is just a good academic exercise, but it doesn't have much bearing. You're just looking at a person who got infected and has recovered, and you're saying, well, this is not superior. Uh, go get a vaccine. That would be superior. Well, superior against what? He just got infected and recovered, or she. And you're saying that this is not superior. So yes, infection itself, when managed healthy in a healthy way, is actually very good. Now, protection against the uh, evolutionary pressure on the spike, that is going to happen either way. Because our body makes neutralizing antibodies against spike protein with the natural infection as well. So that evolution is going to continue to happen. It has nothing to do with the, with the vaccine or not the vaccine. And this is also incorrect. So now on the anti-vax side, this is an incorrect thing to say, because vaccines only target the spike protein, because of that spike protein would only change. No, why not? Because when the vi virus would come in and we would target the spike protein, we would eliminate the virus. If the virus has to change, we have to give a provide a given that given is that fact will have to be, which is not the fact, will have to be that virus arrives in a vaccinated person, the body tries to connect with the spike protein, virus changes the spike so much that the body is defeated and now that virus is just running around and would go out as well. We haven't seen any natural infection or vaccine that would allow this. These 3000 folks who died out of 135 million who knows that they actually had a variant of that kind which destroyed them and is destroyed with them? Or was it a SARS-CoV-3 that died with them? Or did their immune system had a problem or, or have a problem? Or did their immune system did not create enough of the uh, immunity before with the vaccine? Or did they have cancers or diabetes or steroids or chemotherapies or bone marrow issues? Who knows that? Until CDC comes back and tells us case by case what happened, we can't say that was an escape. So your question is good, but, um, and I also agree that the natural infection, if I look at the data that I presented in the previous talk, they both have equal efficacies. Dr. Rain says, love from India, love back to you as well. Um, Ed says, can you update on 
little only map. I can ask my sister a Pfizer question. She works for Pfizer on the vaccine. Don't know if I can remember that question. Thanks. Uh, the Pfizer question to ask is two questions if you can really ask them. Here are the two questions. Number one, I remember talking about Pfizer having a messenger RNA replicase or replicating enzyme in their vaccine, which meant that they could give a smaller dose and still the messenger RNA could increase in number inside the cells. Is this true? Do they have it? If they have it, and I don't know if your sister will be able to disclose that or not, if they have it, that would then answer the question of can messenger RNA be running around abundant? Because if it is being created and replicated in our cells, then it could get out. The second question for Pfizer is, do they have a modified uh, spike protein? So I know that their spike protein RNA that they've generated is modified to make the messenger RNA itself stable plus a spike protein a little more stable. The question is, do they have an anchor protein RNA piece attached with it? So do they expect to make a spike protein then to anchor it to the surface, number one? And number two, is their spike protein modified to not anchor with modified to, I wish I knew this, modified to not anchor with AS2 or anchor with less affinity, meaning is the spike less affine to the AS2? And that means even if it is running around, it would not really bind correctly. These are two or three questions that I have. And so if, if you have someone who can answer that, that would be great. But I, I doubt it because these would be their trade secrets and formulation secrets and such things. Marie, Marie says, so what happens in vaccinated immune compromised who make extremely low antibodies too low in many? So the immune compromised is a uh, same situation, vaccinated or infected, that if the immunity is too low, and then when you give the vaccine, vaccine would try its best to create as much of the training as possible, but it would be lesser than others. Then what is the benefit of doing this? The benefit of doing this is to reduce the chances of dying by the infection because there is still some recognition in the immune system and some response that will be mounted. Spirit Geek says, what about the domestically developed COVID vaccines from Taiwan in terms of safety and efficacy developed by Medigen, MVC, and United? I have no idea. I've not even uh, heard about them. And that is my fault that I'm not too broadly aware. So Bilal from New Jersey says, doctor, do you believe long haulers or vaccinated long haulers will fully recover over the time or debris spike protein will stay there forever like HIV. So <clears throat> this is a topic which I'm seeing so many doctors are afraid of talking about. And I, I hope what I'm catching from your question is what I'm answering. And if not, then please forgive me and ask, ask a question again. Are you asking about vaccine caused symptoms that keep lingering and you're calling them vaccine long haulers? If that is the case, People are avoiding this question and answer because this makes them go against the vaccine and that makes them uh, not good people in terms of social media things. But I would answer it. And I know that I would get some more demonetizations, but effort, let that happen. We should at least talk about these things. There are long haulers from the infection. And yes, there are folks who are getting symptoms from the vaccine, which continue on for a long time. My wife is such a case. Those symptoms have reduced a lot, but they're continuing past whatever two and a half months now. There are people who have more drastic, more severe symptoms that are still continuing, including folks with tinnitus, including fo folks with psychological issues, including folks with the GIT disturbances, including folks with the, uh, with the uh, musculoskeletal issues. These have happened, they have occurred. I have some of them as my patients as well. So 
if I read your question in that context that vaccine caused, and I'm, I'm using this very strong word over here, and this is why I will be slapped in my hand to say, why did you say it's vaccine caused? But that is a thing. And so after the vaccine, these symptoms are possible. Now, would they go away? In my opinion, yes. And let me explain why they would go away. And so I'm going to make, I think I will be the first one to make these conjectures throughout these, uh, <laughs> as people call me, internet doctors. So let's see. Number one, as you said, it is possible that a vaccine creates a spike protein. And that spike protein inside the cell hangs out there. The cell is duplicated. And the spike protein or debris of the spike protein duplicates with it. And if that cell is duplicating cell type, for example, stem cells in the bone marrow, or the cells in the GIT, or the cells under the skin, or the immune system cells, they keep duplicating and replicating. So when we talk about proliferation of the cells, that is what when we say they are duplicating. And if they are continuing to have the debris in them, then yes, they would continue to produce cytokines, and the person would continue to unknowingly fight the vaccine's help. So vaccine is actually trying to help, but the person is now in a state of fighting because the immune system is now enhanced. So this is one possibility. And this, if this happens, can it be cured? Yes. How do we cure this one? Reset the immune system. Best reset, which is not possible, is to actually take the stem cells and then inject them again, which we don't have. So remember, I talked about the Project Phoenix. I think part of the suprarenal gland, part of the pancreas, part of the bone marrow, part of GIT, part of skin, they should be kept in store for every person. And then when they develop uh, dysregulated cells in those tissues, then their own cells should be cultured and injected back in those tissues instead of getting transplanted or trying to fix them. So that was my project, Phoenix. It's an expensive project. I couldn't do it. Anyway, so here, one way to reset is to provide those cells again. The second way to reset this is to give steroids. Steroids would go and calm down the immune system, reduce the number of replications, allow this debris to be, hopefully, these debris-presenting cells to be cleared out. Remember this, our immune system has no mechanism to remove something wrong that is inside the cell, either a virus or a pathogen or a bacteria or a fungus or a, an anomalous protein. The only time an immune system can clear out such cells is going to be when the cell presents something anomalous on its surface or when the cell has gotten so many of the cancerous like things, so many of irregularities that our immune system can detect it and try to kill it. So yes, steroids one. The second thing, if it is spike protein, we should give ivermectin. Ivermectin will get into the cell and bind with the spike protein and try to clear it out. Or at least make it, when it would bind with it, the functionality of the spike protein would reduce. So that is another possibility. Now, if the vaccine effect is not because of the spike protein that is hanging in there, but instead the vaccine has caused the B cells to be so much triggered because of the whole uh, immune system system uh, amplification because of the adjuvants and the other such things. Now the B cells are making antibodies again and again. And this is especially in the case of adenovirus vaccines, which means Johnson & Johnson, which means AstraZeneca, CanSino, Sputnik, and others. In these cases, so I I seem to be an equal opportunity offender. I think all of them are going to actively do something about me. But let's say all of these adenovirus based. Adenovirus based, there is a study that said that adenovirus can hang in our cells for up to a year. If that is the case, if that is the case, then that would mean that these our body cells can continue to produce antibodies for up to a year. And then if the those antibodies and the cytokines, they are causing the inflammation, then this person is going to see this issue for up to a year, but then it would go away as well. Here, this would go away as well if you wait enough. 
So these are the two primary mechanisms. The third mechanism that could happen with the vaccine is the macrophages becoming upset, so macrophage activation syndrome, or MCAS, mast cell activation syndrome. All of those, if happens, then we would have to give anti-macrophage uh, or anti-MCAS, antihistamines. So short answer, yes, it should go away. It may linger on for some time, but I don't think it's going to become an HIV. John B. says, Dr. Mubin, do you see any other uses for this new mRNA technology to treat or cure other diseases besides just being used for the COVID? Yes. So John, Moderna-like companies were actually formed to treat other, other things and cancers. So yes, they. I think now their pockets are full. They are one of the richest companies now in the biotechnologies. So they would continue to do that work. And I think we'll have designer labs or designer uh, shops for cancer where messenger RNA based vaccines for a specific cancer in a specific person will be made. Today's uh, chit chat has become very, very valuable. Thank you very much for good questions. Um, Nurse Betty says, I have often referred people to have an NAD infusion due to ongoing fatigue and brain fog regarding to COVID-19 infection. Most people have a turnaround within 24. Can you speak on this? Very, very uh, interesting. So NAD infusion will mean that you are taking care of their reactive oxygen species. Very interesting. So NAD and NADPH, I believe, are taking care of the production of the things that are taking care of reactive oxygen species. So Nurse Betty, can you do me a favor? Can you um, maybe in my Discord or Twitter send this thing? I want to do some more research to understand why you're seeing this. It is a good thing that you're seeing. I want to dig deeper in the mechanism. So David said, have you already talked about it? I just talked about in this discussion a few minutes ago. So I have not talked about this in detail but I am uh, aware of it. Uh, I also understand it could mean potential organ damage. That is by the Canadian folks, a doctor, assistant professor, uh, talking with Alex. I looked at the study translation a couple of days ago, I think yesterday or day before yesterday. And I do not see any such thing, but mean potential uh, damage. Anything can have potential damage. I'm sitting here and there are cars going outside. They can potentially damage me as well. So potential damage is something else. Actual damage is something else. But yes, that study is out there, and I have to still talk about it. I have read it, though. It didn't bother me too much, though, meaning at least in the first blush, it did not look like an alar alarming situation. But I'll look at it again. Zen Solo says, how does ivermectin prevent COVID? Number one, it doesn't really prevent COVID. It stalls, it interferes with COVID. And I have done 20 videos about it. This is one question that uh, I think that my videos can help. Even within the discussion today, I talked about it a few minutes ago. So Jody says, any thoughts on studies of COVID in sewage in 2019 in some places? Many in New York and Cali I know had uh, pneumonias or bronchitis and long-lasting symptoms, 2019 never diagnosed as anything by lost doctors. Maybe at that time they did not know, and maybe the SARS-CoV-2 was here. Now, could we find SARS-CoV-2-like genetic material in sewage? Yes, from the normal human coronavirus. But if they were specific to the unique pieces of SARS-CoV-2, then that means there was SARS-CoV-2 in there, and that may have happened. Hello, Dr. Bean. Leptin being a cytokine, what do you think about the theory that the reason of severe COVID is due to leptin resistance in patients? So I have actually talked about leptin once before as well. There has been a thought that somehow leptins are involved. So far, if this was the case, I would have seen a lot more studies and focusing on it. I have not seen that. So in theory, it may be possible. I haven't seen much yet. 
Meredith says, thank you, Dr. Sayed. You're very welcome. Um, so Random says, ivermectin versus steroids interactions. I don't think that they have any interaction. Ivermectin is also slightly anti-inflammatory. Steroids are much more anti-inflammatory. But can they be given together? Yes. Ivermectin should not be given or should be given in reduced dose to someone who has liver issues. Or we know that should not be given to pregnant women, to small children, two years or less, or 15 kilogram or less, or lactating women, or people who have allergies to ivermectin, or people who start developing side effects to ivermectin. Side effects being headaches, GIT issues, um, swelling of the face, the allergic reactions, um, etc. So <clears throat> Lake I says, if I take ivermectin as a prophylactic, will I develop antibodies and immunity if I get exposed to the virus while being on ivermectin? Yes. Now the question is, how severe the infection will be? We don't know. But yes, you would. Ivermectin does not interfere with the vaccine or the virus's interaction with our body and our body's training of the response, ivermectin just stalls it so much that our symptoms may be very, um, in case of the infection, mild symptoms or no symptoms. And in case of vaccine, it doesn't even bother it. Daniel Ao says, what actually triggers ADE? Which population is more susceptible? Wild infection vaccine or... So there is a video I did. Uh, if you look at my channel, the video is antibody dependent enhancement, a review. In this, I have reviewed five mechanisms for theoretical mechanisms for ADE. None of them have yet been proved in humans, especially with SARS-CoV-2. They have been proved with other viruses, but not with SARS-CoV-2. Some of these are purely conjectures and hypothetical, and they are not proved anywhere. Some of them are proved in some of the other animals or in vitro studies or with some other viruses. So for ADE, I'm not worried at all about SARS-CoV-2. This is just an incorrect thing that people keep talking about. Doug Gross says, how would viral debris in stem cells be replicating during mitosis? So what happens is during mitosis, whatever is in there in the cell is duplicated. So if the virus debris is sitting in there, that would get duplicated as well. So that is like a photocopy of the cell. It's beautiful. Uh, I actually looked at that um, mechanism. It was interesting. Maximus says, if I could show one lecture, study, interview, et cetera, to a friend who's skeptical about ivermectin, which one would it be to the best to convince them, maybe one of yours. So if they don't want to watch the videos, then the latest Israeli study from Dr. Eli Schwartz. So I have the study video. And then within the video, there is a link to the study. That is a nice study to look at. Then um, there are many other studies. Then Dr. Alam's study from Bangladesh is also a very interesting study to look at. Then the Egyptian study about the prophylaxis of ivermectin in the healthcare workers is also very interesting to look at. Then if you wanted to see the mechanism, I have a video. I have multiple videos of the mechanism. There is a latest video in which I, uh, the title is updated mechanism, in which I added a couple of more mechanisms with the new studies. In that video, in the reference, the there are links to all the mechanisms. So if he doesn't want to watch the video, as many people say that I don't want to listen to an internet doctor. So in that case, you can just pick up the links and share those links with them. Ed Mac, thank you very much for the super chat.
So Doug Gross says you're wrong about mitosis. Sorry. Okay. I may be wrong, but I think I'm right. So uh, mitosis, I may be wrong, but spike proteins getting duplicated with the cells, I am right, because that is a study as well. Supernight says, Dr. Bean, do you think that consuming Ayurvedic herbs can positively impact immunity in order to protect against COVID-19? So because I do not know the mechanism of the herbs, I can't comment that would they do it or not. It is more of an observation than me talking about uh, the mechanism. Rima, based on what you're seeing, how likely do you think the virus will mutate substantially. Also, strangely, even the three dogs in the FSA Zoom call tonight seemed confused. One dog said the Japanese study showed the spikes from vax were found in organs, also seemed confused about ivermectin and vaccines. It was odd. They need to watch more bean videos. So, <laughs> um, so first of all, your first part of your question, if given enough time and enough bodies, virus would continue to change to become something else. That is how we had human coronaviruses, which are different than MERS and SARS-CoV-1 and then SARS-CoV-2. So if we waited on this one and it allowed it to continue to replicate, it will become different. And maybe at some point it will be SARS-CoV-3. So it's a function of time and opportunity. I think the virus's opportunity is reducing. It's not increasing. Plus, virus is mutating towards adapting more towards us and not becoming more lethal towards us. So I think it would actually not become lethal, but mutate towards adapting with us. That is one part. And the second part, the uh, that thank you for that comment. Andrea says today was the vaccine days. Congratulations. Andrea says good night all. Good night, stay safe, and hopefully you would not feel tired after two days. LL Hannah says, Dr. Bean is usually right. I am usually proved right after a few months. Bilal, New Jersey says, Dr. Mubeen, they have found the debris spike protein hidden in macrophages. Do you think they can replicate? Yes, they do. And uh, the debris in monocytes, and then the monocytes, parent cells which are making those monocytes, so what happens is that some of these cells would go back into the bone marrow and sit there and replicate there. And if they have these infections in them, then they would replicate with them. <laughs> Building makers, I love it. I think I'm right. Uh, Doug is an awesome, awesome, cool bean. He's very, very cool. He's been with us for a long time. So Doug may be correct, but I think I'm correct as well. Doug says, but platinum in stem cells can be duplicated during mitosis a nanobot, if the viral debris is not encoded in the chromosome, it won't be created. So the, no, so the problem is different. When the mitosis is occurring, it is not that everything that is encoded on chromosome would, would duplicate. If you look at the uh, structure, in the, during the cell cycle, if you just actually, let me just quickly show you. Uh, and again, you have been with me for a very long time. I usually uh, do not. So check this out. Let's say cell cycle. And I want to show. OK. Uh, better cycle somewhere. Maybe this one. This one I like most. So if you see in the cell cycle, so pick up any one of them, usually what happens is, ah, I cannot get a good picture. So if you look at this, G1 is growth, S is DNA synthesis, G2 is growth and preparation for mitosis, and then is the mitosis. In this process, it's not just the DNA and the chromosomes that are duplicating. Everything present in the cell is tried to be duplicated. That is the DNA preparation. And I'll give you one more example, which you would love. Uh, and I know that this is the kind of discussion I'm OK with. I don't like to debates with, uh, debate with folks like Geert and others. Um, if we have folic acid deficiency or vitamin B12 deficiency, the cell tend to become very big and big and big. The reason for that is that they try to get ready for 
uh, rep, uh, replication or division, but because of folic acid and B12 deficiency, the DNA cannot, DNA phase cannot be completed quickly, while the rest of the cell pieces keep becoming duplicated. And because they become duplicated, the cell become big, because now they have duplicated material, which was supposed to go to half to each daughter. So because DNA did not duplicate fast enough, now that duplicate material is sitting. And if you take that cell and look at it under the microscope, you look at big cells. That is what is the macrocytic anemia. So it does happen. OK, so <clears throat> but whatever Doug says, I would just go with that. <laughs> William says, I know the media is always trying to scare us. But do you think these new variants continue to get more infectious and simultaneously more lethal, which I thought usually doesn't happen scared? So, OK, so let me answer this question. I've answered this a few times before. I think this part of the video should be brought out and cut and separately presented. Let me let me explain what, how much scared we should be and how much we should not be. So the question is, vaccine, um, sorry, variants continue to be more infectious and more lethal. I'm going to answer this part. Can So normally what happens is here is a, let's look at the normal first. Here is a virus. It is some level of infectiousness and lethality. So this virus has it, right? So we can't say that a virus that is infectious cannot be lethal. We are looking at SARS-CoV-2, which has both properties. Now let's say this has both properties. Then it is making its copies in a person. So one of the copy is very similar to the original one. So it would retain the same contagiousness and same lethality. And it is serving this thing because it is spreading with it. And for SARS-CoV-2, I want to add this, that the first five days of being asymptomatic had been great for this virus because during that time, it could continue to replicate to the point that it can kill someone. But during that time of five days when the person, mean five days, when the person is still moving about and they're giving it to others, that is where the, the virus had its golden ticket. Now, I'll come back to this concept in a second. Now, let's say virus made a more angry variant as well. So let's say this is the more angry one. And this is just going to kill everyone. And because of this variant, this person becomes really, really sick. And because they become really sick, they just die right away. And now this virus dies with them, even if it gets a chance to go to another person or another person, because it is too contagious and because it is too lethal, it just keeps throwing them uh, quickly down. And so this virus does not get a chance to quickly and rapidly keep going to others. So it has a chance to continue if this window time of five days type thing is still available to it. And you would see that with the more contagious viruses, the newer variants, this window of time is shrinking for them. So now it is one day that they create symptoms or two days they create symptoms. Some cases, 10 hours they create symptoms. So as much as they may be lethal and want to have a good passport to say, hey, don't look at me for five days. Let me just go to others. The problem is that we are going to kill them, or we are going to know them within two days. So the person is going to become very ill. So now they have a shorter window, window of time. And then let's say we have another virus that has a daughter that is just totally out of her element. She has no idea how to uh, cause infections. And so this daughter is just going to die with this person or would die in this person. Now let's talk about this guy that has become more contagious, these variants we're talking about. So now let's say a more contagious variant arrives in a person, and this is going to cause lots of infection. So what is going to happen is to be able to shed, it still needs a person to be walking about. But to be more contagious, what it means is it's going to get into the cell faster because it has a higher affinity. It would come out, then get into the next cell faster and just very quickly destroy a lot of cells before the immune system gets a chance to get ahead of it. And because it is doing it, the person is going to become ill very fast. It's not that now the this virus still has five days ticket 
to keep destroying us and we say we're not going to create symptoms go ahead do what you want no we would create symptoms in two days and now this person is on the bed and the number of interactions in two days are now lesser than the number of interactions in five days so this virus once again cannot really go to a lot of people it can replicate fast it can go to a lot of people in two days but that still is not exponential growth then what it is going to do is that let's say if it is lethal as well it's going to start killing them and what would happen is this window would keep becoming shorter and shorter for it so that is what you're seeing with the variants that as they become more efficient the window to spread is smaller so even if they are maintaining the same lethality they still have to do their job within two days and as they become more efficient their window to replicate would continue to reduce that would give them less and less chance of killing more people even if they are more lethal because they would have less chance to get out to more people because the window of time is less so there is this balance struck for the virus's handicap to go out in a particular time frame and the lethality so should we be scared no why not so let me back up for a second it can any of these SARS-CoV-2 virus and variants can cause a person to die it can cause me to die so should I be scared of that yes but should I be scared that the new variant is faster than it would be more lethal and it would get that's probably not the case so LL Hannah says that the Delta could be a real problem and I have to yet look at the so UK has the uptick they have now 3x the cases question is are these cases all infected vaccinated or they are because it is spreading fast it is now spreading through those who are not vaccinated yet or infected yet and not protected yet so that data and then the death if it spreads faster but the deaths are lesser then we're fine this is becoming a normal flu like thing or cold like thing again without that data we do not know let me look at this data we've been looking at this data for the last few uh what is that few days so let's look at it look at the uptick here so there is an uptick and it continues to grow upward day over day so it was here when we talked about 100 uh, 2000 1900 and then it became 4000 and now it has become uh, 5000 6000 and even today what 7000 so 2 to 7 almost 8 so 4x or 3x you know ramp up the actual number of cases active cases are lesser but still ramping up the meaning less up but the deaths are still not reported and it is totally understandable that the people who are becoming sick imagine that this uptick is all because of the new variant that means the folks who are here if it is more lethal as well then it is going to if it is more lethal then the number of deaths expected from the cases for example let's say out of 100 cases not 100 people out of 100 cases normally 19 percent end up in hospitals out of those then another five not percent but five people end up in icu and out of those about two to three die that is two to three percent death will we see two to three percent death over here if that is the case that means the virus is more contagious but not more lethal if the number of deaths now start appearing more for example after two to three weeks these 7000 patients end up having 10 percent deaths and uh, god forbid i hope not 10 percent death of the case then we have a more contagious and more lethal virus i don't think it is at that stage yet or maybe uk is not reporting this data yet but ideally the deaths that are affected that are caused by this virus the variant will appear let's say from here this is may 29 
we are in June. Let's see from here. May 26. We are in June 9. So 26 to 9, already kind of two weeks. Usually the people who die, they stay in ICU hospitals and ICUs three week to six week. So next week and the week after, if there is greater lethality, we would start seeing it. There are going to be deaths that are going to happen. And we would see that here. If the percentage is higher than normal, then that would mean more contagious and more lethal. I hope not. Daniel says, ADE has been a great concern and complications in dengue hemorrhagic shock mechanism. So once again, I have actually discussed five mechanisms. There is a video of discussing all those. Look, the mechanisms could be antibody attached to the virus and then getting phagocytosed and then virus and antibody are inside the cell and causing an infection. That is one. Instead of getting phagocytosed and destroyed, causing infection. Second mechanism could be that the antibody and the virus combined have a confirmation change in the antibody that acts on the antibody receptors and macrophages and other, which acts like a key to unlock the route to infect the cell. So enhancing these infectivity or susceptibility of the cell. Then complement related, there are three mechanisms as well. So there are five mechanisms and other viruses have shown some of those SARS-CoV-2 has not yet, even after trying in lab, to produce this mechanism. Alfred Chow says, in the last video, Dr. Bean was getting feisty. I never saw that before. He's usually so kind and polite. So there is one thing that has really been um, annoying me, and that is that Folks who says that others are sheeples, they themselves have such wrong concepts. And then they are not willing to uh, think about it together. And you do not know how many curses and how much uh, they, uh, what kind of things they say. So after 15 months, <laughs> when I still see folks who are doing this, I become annoyed. So I, my apologies that I lost my temper. But these are simple things to look at. And it's not necessary that I have to present them and somebody has to agree with me. There are This is all outside present. Lokesh Tawari says, do you think WHO has got a specific reason for not giving approval to co-vaccine and Sputnik and UK asking its citizens to revaccinate who have taken above. That's a very interesting thing. So I do not know if it is a political thing. For example, uh, I was told a few days ago, Saudi Arabia has said that it will not accept uh, anyone for Hajj who has a Chinese vaccine. So that means that anybody who wants to go to Saudi Arabia for Hajj or other Umrah or those things, Muslim religious pilgrimages, they have to get another vaccine and Pfizer or some other. So is that political? Maybe if you ask me, I feel more comfortable with looking at the mechanisms and the data as much as we I repeat this statement every time, as much as we hammer these companies, Pfizer's and Moderna's and um, Johnson and Johnson's and we say you guys suck and you guys are bad. Even then, they still have much more data compared to many of these uh, companies. So if you ask me, I am less comfortable when I hear how they work, I become OK, but I'm less comfortable because of lack of data. Alfred Chow says it's OK to be fe feisty sometimes. Thank you. It's some I actually I actually threw my pen on the table. I usually don't do that. I'll say thank you for your work, Dr. Bean. You're, you're very welcome. Uh, Lizzie says, Dr. Bean, Danny all posted a question on light sensitivity six months after COVID. Has this been observed in patients? Any recommendations? So light sensitivity could be multiple things. But one of the things is that it's not really in the retina or the eyes. 
but instead it is the neurological sites inside the brain that are kind of responding more towards the light. The other possibility is that within the retina there is some damage. So at the end of the day, whatever the, the location of the effect is, it is going to be inflammation related. So if you look at the video that I had done in the past, uh, brain fog, I think in the title there is brain fog, uh, confusion, myalgia. Uh, if you look at that video, there are some hints in there for how to start managing it. Eventually, fluvoxamine and ivermectin-like things would help. But start with the exercises first before the medicines. Cynthia says, your patience is astoundingly astounding, really. Thank you. We are all privileged to be here with you. Thank you very much. Actually, I am privileged to have this beautiful uh, tribe of cool beans. Do you know that our cool beans tribe has become an envy for so many other doctors that uh, Again, we are not a huge tribe. We are now about a million, including Facebook and, and YouTube. So not a very huge tribe. There are doctors who have one million on YouTube. But the depth of knowledge and understanding and being able to dispel the myths that in this tribe is untold. I don't see this in, in anyone else. A doctor had called me a few days ago. And he said that I was talking with someone who is a cool bean. So maybe some cool bean went to a doctor and talked about our work. And he said that when he or she was talking with me, I thought they are healthcare professional. And I said, are you a doctor? And they said, no, I'm not a doctor, but I watch <laughs> Dr. Bean's videos. So he, he was so compelled that he called me. So I think that I think that this is the interesting part of this uh, tribe. Eileen, thank you very much. And yes, please reminder, I would be off tomorrow. Alexander says, is there a potential, if there are potential rare long-term side effects from mRNA, does this mean that it might be safer to go for inactivated vaccine, Sinopharm, despite poor performance in Seychelles, Bahrain? <clears throat> so it's a, it's a hypothesis which I cannot prove or disprove that in the future what would happen. But the... Inactivated viruses have their own issue of uh, adjuvants in there and the problem with the, if they're not properly inactivated and then the, uh, the efficacy. So it re really is your call. Um, I can't make that decision. William says, thank you for your dedication to us all. I know you probably get tired of us asking repetitious questions. We're all just scared, or at least I am, and your words of wisdom give us hope. So I am happy to answer those questions. Not at all an issue. And thank you very much for the super chat. Plus, stay safe and happy. And I don't think there is a reason to be scared. Art Patent Forever says, if vaccine only results in spike protein presented on surface of vaccinated muscle cells, then why is toxic spike protein found in bloodstream and all organs, including brain? Uh, Art Patron, did you see my talk a few days ago where I presented a study where they had a hypothesis that adenovirus-based vaccine may have the DNA of the, of the spike injected into the nucleus where the DNA must have become um, um, the intron removal or the piece of the DNA removal was not done correctly, which then caused the anchor of the spike protein to become um, anchor protein not to be correctly formed and the spikes were just getting released from the cell like a secretion from it. And then possibility of all of this. So this was a hypothesis which is not proved. And I showed it in that video the, in the comments region when people would challenge them, they would say that, hey, we are not doctors and we are not um, we haven't gotten more data yet. 
And even for that preprint, at one point, the author said, this is the version one of the preprint. And he said, I just wanted to, we wanted to hurry to show you this. So there is nothing yet solid in terms of what is happening. But let's say if the proteins are found, the question I have is, which I need to answer yet, is proteins found in healthy people who are vaccinated? And if that is the case, sure, we get many antibodies or antigens and their complexes running around in our body at a very low level that our body just clears them out. So are these proteins coming from, let's say, some damage like the study I talked about, or some broken cells that are releasing the uh, spike proteins, or maybe the messenger RNA is actually getting out and going into the other tissues and causing spike production there. Then what if it is not here and somewhere else? So the presence is not itself very interesting. The question is, the quantity of presence, the volume, the duration of presence, and the damage by it. If the people are healthy and they are showing their presence, then I don't see an issue. But the question is, how much? So I have to do some more research. Then he says, thank you. You're very welcome. Um, William says, I talked to Dr. DeMello from, wow, man, you're a celebrity, William. Um, So Nipa is here. Hi, Nipa. How are you? So yes, hit the like button. That helps a lot. So Denise says, I'm not scared at all. Thank you very much, Denise. Swinging good music says, my uncle took both shots of Pfizer, says he regrets taking them, both of them. Why? If he is fine, meaning generally health-wise, then he should be, he should be OK. This is a good point as well. So JLB says new variants are faster, so even young people don't have time to fight, hence more of them in hospitals before only the old or the sick don't get fight in them. Yes. Cool. So how about we, uh, <laughs> Rima says, I'm not afraid because I feel equipped with facts because of you, Dr. B. Thank you very much. And I have made mistakes here and there in my uh, talks as well. Some of those I had to remove, for example, yesterday, uh, in the talk, I made a mistake where I talked about the therapeutic dose. So it was 2.5 milligram, and I called it 0 0.25 milligram. And fortunately, Doug caught it. And then it was also interesting that even when I was wrong, I became all right because the company said that in the 2.5 milligram vector cell, the actual ivermectin is 1%, and so it is actually 0 0.25 milligram per kilogram body weight. So I accidentally became correct. I, I was actually wrong. So I have made such <laughs> mistakes as well. All right. So with this, thank you very much. I would see you day after tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll be traveling. So please do me a favor. Please like at least if not subscribing and sharing. And in addition to that, if you wanted to support this work, there are three links in the description. You can buy me a coffee. It does not need PayPal. Or there's a PayPal link as well. Or you can be a patron as well. And thank you very much. I'll see you day after tomorrow.